Boobies. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to your favorite podcast. Boobay. That's right. Where you get your horror and all your booze from us two. And boobies. Yes. Lots of those. I'm Joshua. And I'm Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ready to have some thrills today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about The Haunting. Yes. Um, one of Caitlin's favorite. Right? Yeah. So it was one that actually traumatized me as okay. a kid. And so we're talking about the 1999 adaptation of Sherry or Sherry Jackson. Sherry Jackson's mm-hmm. uh, novel, The Haunting of Hill House. Shirley Jackson. Shirley. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if that's where Shirley in The Haunting of Hill House, the Netflix series, comes in. Because remember, the other sister is named Shirley. Shirley. Mm-hmm. So I bet you that's where she comes in. Yeah. I actually have some notes today. So oh, okay. I have some some little information. Dope. But yes, you're right. They were paying homage to her in The nice. Haunting of Hill House okay. because she was an extra character. Yeah, because I was like, I was like, the main three are Nell, Theo, Luke. and Luke. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they added in the other ones, um, which is weird. Like, why didn't they just make her the novelist in The Haunting of Hill House mm-hmm. instead of... The brother, yeah, uh, whatever his name was. I think they, which was done really well, which it, we'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's just a different ad- ad- adaptation. There I was the, the one in the like sixty three, sixty three mm-hmm. that uh, came out, and and be honest, I've not seen that one. Um, I do want to go watch it now. I watched some clips of it actually online that I found on it YouTube. Apparently, and it looked, got great reviews. It was, it's actually a really good movie. It's by, the public um, hated this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's by the first one was by this guy named Robert Wise, mm. um, and he's actually the director of the Day the Earth Stood Still, oh, West okay. Side Story, Sound oh. of Music, oh, the shit. Andromeda Strain. Like man has got hits yeah. behind him. So yeah. okay, I would imagine that that one would be good then. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that came out with that movie back then was just like I think um, he was like the inception of like building up scare but mm. without showing you anything there that's and that's my favorite kind of horror yeah now this movie does not do that not at um, all, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's a little bit cheesy and but as as like in the in 99 yeah and like when i was a kid watching this movie growing up i mean to me the special effects weren't that bad like i don't remember thinking oh my god like, of course i was still a kid you know i was like 10 Mm -hmm. or not in 99 but like you know i was still very young probably i was like 10 by the time i watched it yeah i must have been i might have been around eight probably the first time i watched this movie um so early 2000s when i watched it i was like okay i mean the only real movies that had like pretty good special effects at that point that i feel like were like cutting edge would have been the star wars and lord of the rings franchises right at the around yeah of the early 2000s yeah but I, like you're saying though too it, it, it looks outdated now because of everything and how far we've come in technology exactly i'm but, like if you go back and you watch any like fucking hg wells time machine love that movie <laughs> it's laughable though it is yeah. now and but like at the time i was like This is good. This is the shit. And so, you know, growing up, I was like, whoa, that's fucking weird when those little baby heads would start talking and shit. Mm -hmm. And then the part that got me is I always, always wanted a canopy bed growing up. I was like, that would be so cool. It's like a fucking princess castle, like got a canopy. I look dope as shit. Mm -hmm. Um, And then (laughs) there's that one scene where he like comes, the, what's Hugh? Hugh. Comes out of the top of the canopy bed mm-hmm. or like his face it's like a face and it comes towards her and i think is borderline impregnating her or like really that's kind of you. like the vibe that's going on i can see that yeah. um because he was like trying to get i think that was like one of the main points is he's trying to build his family um it, yeah so the movie is about but that shit scared me mm-hmm. that after that i was like fuck canopy beds don't want them and then milo has me afraid of Air vents in the floor. Air vents in the floor? Yeah, you know, like in trailer homes and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where they got. I used to have one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're scary, huh? Yeah. My friend's house, she's got a giant one. Like, 
like where you, your whole body can just go into it already. Like it's it's like half the size of this table. Seriously. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I guess they need it for like actual air circulation and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You but know, I was like, put a fucking rug over that <laughs> or like put a bookshelf over it. Can we put some sequins, something? Can we jazz it up? Yeah, just make it, it less right scary. Right now it looks like a pit of despair that I can Hell. fall into and I'm going to see a little kid in a yellow raincoat crawling around under it. Oh, wow. You know, that reminds cry. me of a really funny story. Is we used to live in a trailer house, my family, back in the day. And I think I was still really little. Um, had the air vents and all, a big air vent, not even a small one. It was a huge ass, you mm-hmm. know? And so, um, yeah, um, disregard the air vent situation thing. But one time my sister had a friend over and she fell through the floor of the house. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> she said, fast track to getting into the air vent system. <laughs> she said, solution, I've got it. Jam <laughs> fell right through one leg though, so Ooh. only one leg fell through. So I bet she that was hurt literally like a bitch, half though. a body in. Imagine oh. some like thirteen year old girl just yeah. like oh. in the floor. Damn, it's funny, um, but also yeah. like unfortunate mm-hmm. for her. I'm sure she yeah. did not find it very funny at the time. Humble beginnings, humble yeah. beginnings. Yeah. Hey Amen. I was mm. like, my most recent trailer house and the one that my parents still live in just has AC units in the window now. Mm-hmm. It's not even connected. There's no AC. There's no judgment. It's just trash. Okay. We do what we do. <laughs> it's okay. Um, trash is fine. It's all fine. Everything's on fire, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. This is fine. So we kind of just dove in there, but to kind of give everybody some context, um, The Haunting, 1999. Um, director is, he has a really like, I wrote it down. I know it. John DeBont. 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 He's. Oh, first off. Mm-hmm. So this, <laughs> we said it got pretty trashed by the public. Um. This movie got a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Which is trash. Yeah. That is so bad. Um, Five out of 10 on IMDb. And then like 42% on Metacritic. And then like I think 28% of, or like 28, like the public was like 28%. They were like, this is what it gets. So like most horror movies kind of get panned like mm -hmm. immediately just because, I mean. The genre. Yeah. A lot of people, they don't understand it or... I feel like horror movie critics, like a superficial ones, not mm-hmm. us, who just like horror. Yeah. Um, they will they'll fucking go to town mm-hmm. and destroy the fuck out of Leave most a movies. Scathing <clears throat> review. Yeah. And so this one got that, but then also the public. But then I was also reading some audience reviews online, and um, but they were like. Critics pan aside, they were like, I fucking love this remake. has its own flavor of the story, much mm-hmm. more visual version than the original. The cherubs on the wall are so emotive, and they actually scared me for a sec. When I was a kid, yeah, it the moment you. they started, yeah, I was like, oh, fuck, like babies on a wall talking? Uh-uh. Don't want that. Yeah, hard pass. Get me the fuck away from it. <laughs> no, yeah, and then, yeah, and mm, they, they, they built it up. It all kind of came towards the end, like all just crashing in this yes. like last 30 minute scene of just cgi cgi mm-hmm. ghosts ghosts moving it's, statue <laughs> that part, towards the end yeah it's like now i mean i remember going back and rewatching it even two years ago and being like oh okay mm-hmm. this is what this <laughs> but i still like it like i still think it's a pretty okay horror movie. John DeBont will be very thankful that you said that <laughs> wherever he is, if he's still alive. Everyone else? Mm. You know, he's hates actually him. the director of a movie that I kind of really like, um, Twister. <laughs> I fucking love Twister. I love Twister. Twister's like, oh man. Yeah, no. Uh, my stepdad's from Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And so we like drove over, it was like film not long from yeah. his house. And so like we kind of drove around and saw some of the theme- scenes from Twister. We got cows. Twister's great. That's and good. the belt holding you on through an F5 tornado, totally realistic. Very realistic. You know, <laughs> and then one of my favorite scenes is like the uh, movie theater scene, the drive- drive-in drive scene when that tornado's coming. Like that is in itself like a weather horror movie. Oh, in a yeah. Sense. No, yeah. I mean, it's scary because mm-hmm. if that shit was to happen to you in real life, like I, I think that could be classified as some yeah, sort of horror. I, from I mean, like the ages of like, s- from like the ages of seven to like probably 12, I wanted to be a meteorologist because we had like a really bad storm one time and there was a tornado like close to our house. <laughs> and I was just like, nope, 
I'm going to beat you. I need I'm, to know everything of oh, how you work so that way fair. I can survive. Because I am terrified of tornadoes and I've never seen one at all in mm. person and I would love to keep it that way. Mm, yeah, the moment that like anytime the sky starts turning green, I'm like, get me out of here. It's a sign. I need a bathtub. It's a sign. <laughs> um, anyway, so John DeBont. John DeBont, the movie star is Lily Taylor, mm-hmm. who is the lady from um, she's the, got first Conjuring. the First Conjuring. She's she, the mom. Although she's got even, even longer, you know, repertoire of stuff under her belt. Oh, yeah. Liam Neeson, of course. Love him. Qui Gon mm-hmm. Jin. Qui Gon. Qui Gon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we've got some Catherine Zeta Jones. Love her. For the, fuck. for the sex appeal. Um, I would be a lesbian for her. And uh, Owen Wilson. <laughs> 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 you don't have to stretch too far. Yeah. <laughs> and then Owen Wilson, isn't it? Uh, um, wow. Wow. Yeah, that, it's strange. That was a choice. Seeing him in a horror movie. A horror movie. Yeah, yeah. and I think I, and I think that was the this, only one he they did. Said, Ooh, not for you, bud. <laughs> We're not gonna put you in it. It's but so, he did offer some good comic relief. I feel like comic relief. It. it was also too in watching it. It's like he was painfully just like pointing out every obvious thing. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's scary. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Oh, <laughs> the fucking. Mm, sorry, I just remembered the whole fucking piano key. Oh, splicing that chick's yeah, eye. I, ooh. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, him in the in the fireplace mm. scene. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 That part's fun. Which poor guy? I mean, but also too, he was in that same fireplace earlier. He knew what was going to happen. But you know, it's real funny because you watch movies and they play things out, and you watch it, and it's like a scene that's like two minutes, three minutes long, right? Mm-hmm. But then I think in my head, realistically, this is all happening like from perspectives of. Everybody they're showing us, so like this is happening in like thirty seconds. Yeah, but we're watching it, you know. So it's For, just yeah, really exactly. weird. Yeah, but yeah, man. Um, it's got some it's, pretty big names. Yeah, it, it does. Mean, it had a good roster for nineteen ninety nine. Um, and they for the most part did pretty well. I was catching up on the nineteen sixty three version mm-hmm. of it and um watching some clips and stuff, and it is very much so a remake for the most part. Yeah. It's just that they took a different spin on it. Um, in the first movie, they actually told them that it was for a ghost study, supernatural, supernatural events, stuff. Yeah. They were gonna go and you know instead of saying insomnia, yeah. And then this one, Liam Neeson's character, the doctor, he tells them that it's for a insomnia experiment. Yeah, but a little sleep clinic in a weird haunted mansion, all alone, locked, <laughs> gated. Um, nobody lives there. Of course, the There's people, just the caretakers, weird caretakers, yeah, and the caretakers don't even stay there overnight. They leave when the sun goes down and lock the gates behind them. And they make a pretty clear point of saying, "No, we don't stay here after dark. We don't. <laughs> yeah, we won't tell you why, but we but think we you should don't. pick up on that. Yeah, so it's the moment anyone's like, "No, I get the fuck out of here." Like, and there are no questions being. I'd asked. be like, "Oh, okay, cool. So don't sleep here. Got it. Got it." Mm-hmm. Unless I'm like purposely looking for ghosts, like because I would willingly lock myself in a haunted mansion I feel like overnight. I would too. Yeah, yeah, I want to see that shit. I, I mean, know. as long as it's not gonna like fucking chase me down the hallway in like a weird. That's probably also isn't there a scene? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't rewatch this because I couldn't find it. Okay. Um, well, it's on Paramount Plus, but my mom like was supposed to do something and then she stopped responding to me. So well, I watched it two and a half times for you. So. But I was like, I watched it a billion times as a kid, and then I read a bunch of reviews on it. Um, and then I also watched it two years ago at Thanksgiving. Because. Because every family does that for Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's a Thanksgiving yeah. tradition. <laughs> but isn't there a scene where he, like, chases her down the hallway in, like, a fucking wheelchair? Or is, there's a wheelchair somewhere, isn't there? Or maybe I envisioned yeah. that as a kid. But it's, like, at yes. that door yeah. to his study. I didn't watch it two and a half times. I don't know. I, I this did, one though. could be one that I was misremembering, though, from a kid. I also have a, like, weird fear of wheelchairs in the middle of a room. Yeah. Uh, just empty wheelchairs. Mm. I don't like it because whatever the hell is supposed to be in that fucking wheelchair shouldn't be around walking. <laughs> um, and so that typically means they're crawling. Yeah. Which I don't fuck with things that crawl. Or they were never supposed to be in the wheelchair in the first place yeah and so fun, fun, it's just fun. a bunch of lies and i don't like it mm-hmm. there was this one time that i was going uh to a haunted house and like i was like i don't fuck with wheelchairs in the middle of the room so i typically am like haunted asylum mm-hmm. houses are the ones that scare me the most mm. because i don't fucking like wheelchairs and they were like that's such a weird fear caitlin like 
you'll maybe see one you'll be fine we got into the third room of this house nothing but it was fucking wheelchairs on the ceiling wheelchairs everywhere and they all three turn around and look at me like and i was like i fucking told you (laughs) and they were like oh and i was like get me out of this goddamn room that is so scary and then we had to crawl through a hole like Mm -hmm. at one point we had to crawl on our hands and knees and uh i was like the first one to come out the other side and this bitch is like crawling towards me and i was like Fuck this. I was like, oh I don't want to do crawling people. I couldn't. Yeah. Um, it was good haunted house. Uh, that sounds like a good one. Where'd you f- even it, go for that It's one, one of those touring ones. It was in Austin. Uh, it's, okay. like, it's like one of the big ones. I've always wanted to do the ones where it's like you have to sign a waiver before you go into. Oh, yeah. Like, See, you know. I don't know if I could actually handle that. It seems like fun. Yeah. I just want to be scared. Oh. I was like, I just, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I just want to be murdered. I just want to be murdered, just but be murdered, consensually. Cold blood. Be a part of the show. Little kinky. No, <laughs> <laughs> no kink shame here. Um, Anyways, and so, yeah, yeah. So, story is, is that this old guy, Ukraine, he mm-hmm. wanted to, he fell in love. He got a wife, wanted to knock her up, have a big house with beautiful babies inside of it. Lots and I think, babies. what was the, what was the thing? He wanted his house to be full of, of the sound of children's laughter. Yeah. Um, I don't dark know fast. who wants their house filled with the sound of children's laughter. Not me. Not me. Especially not an abandoned mansion. But. That's an issue. That's what we were working for. <laughs> um, and apparently his wife ended up, uh, she, she had babies. She wasn't barren, but all the babies died. Mm-hmm. And she went crazy. Yeah. Killed herself. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of kept adding on and building onto this house. And then <clears throat> apparently he would steal children yep. from the mill, and basically, I guess, children child without, labor. yeah, yeah uh-huh, child laborers. And, and make them work. Uh-huh. But then he wouldn't like let them go. Essentially, orphan children. Yeah, and then he wouldn't let them go, and they and then would be he'd trapped, kill them, and then they'd die, and burn them in the fireplace. And so that way, their they could souls never leave. Would be there forever, trapped, yep. mm. and so they're there forever, all the time. What an evil, evil, evil man! Yeah, and then also like that. <laughs> If he commissioned that portrait of him on the wall, <laughs> he shouldn't have. He should have gotten a discount because it wasn't a cute look for him. Honestly, I think he wanted it to look that way. Oh yeah, he looked like fucking like beast, but the not but cute. not sexy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because I didn't have that crush without the Disney flair when I was young. Oh, it's okay. I mean, Beast was hot as fuck, and mm. then when he turned into a prince, I was like, "Give it to me. Give me yeah. the sauce." He had a big nose, but I was into it. I mean, uh, Jafar was one of my first crushes, so I can't talk. Ugh, mine was uh, <laughs> Prince Eric <laughs> and Aladdin. Uh, yeah, uh, I pretty much the entire cast of Aladdin. I was like, uh, literally, I'm here for this. And then even the Sultan. Yeah, mm. I'm like, okay, a little, a little short, weird. A little <laughs> short step. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So. All this stuff happens. He dies. Apparently, the people who lived in the town um, were just like, fuck it. We're not going to do anything. Just leave it there. Let it's it haunted. Rot. Yeah, literally. And Liam Neeson's character decided this is the perfect place to have an insomniac sleep clinic. Let's mm-hmm. bring people who have trouble sleeping and put them in this mansion. And um, oh, yeah, on the first night, I'm going to tell you this horrifying story of the man who lived here. Yeah. And uh, so plant a little seed of fear in good your night. brains. That's have it. fun sleeping. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let your minds run um, amok. There was a lot of, to me, overacting in this. I feel like there was <laughs> compensation for a lack of, um, look at the material, honey. Plot. Yeah. Uh, or the, lack of. The writing, the writing, source material. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the plot is there. I mean, the movie. Uh, it was I, already made. It is. Yeah. It's already <laughs> made. And then there's an actual book. Yeah. Um. So we had talked a little bit. I was going to like kind of read a little bit of the plot from the actual novel. Yeah. Okay. Because we had talked briefly on one of the episodes about how, um, like, neither of us have actually read mm, this. The book, yeah. And, I, and I'll and say, I didn't know, like, I completely forgot that The Haunting was about Hill House at all. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I was, I just, like, remembered it one day after watching The Haunting of Hill House and, and Netflix their names adaptation. And yeah. yeah, and then I was watching it and then they were like, Hill House. And then I was like, Hugh and Theo and mm-hmm. everyone. And it all started coming together and I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, oh, because I knew there were other adaptations mm-hmm. of the novel. Um, but I didn't put two and two together Yeah, until going back and re-watching it. And then I was like, oh. Well, I didn't even know until you told me. Yeah. So. <laughs> but um, so I will say the movie... 
the movies are a better adaptation of the summary of the book. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, With the whole idea that they're going to this hill house with the idea of a sleep study. And then it's actually being a paranormal or well, the paranormal is actually what it is. The sleep study was the fun fact thrown in with the 1999 version. Um, But like, so the main characters, as we already kind of talked, were uh, Nell Luke and then Theo. It says a bohemian artist implied to be a lesbian. Mm. She never actually has come out, but no. in all adaptations, they've made her pretty lesbian. Well, <laughs> she was pretty lesbian in this '99 version, but she only had one line where explicitly kind of like, yeah, where in the beginning, the because at first I was like, she gonna sleep with everyone. Nell asked her something, and she was just like, yeah, well, my girlfriend loves it, but my boyfriend hates it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like okay, '99 work. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't rap, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> <sighs> Get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, in the, in the Netflix version, there's no question. Very, this very bitch, lesbian. Bitch er, lesbian. Bi, bisexual, I believe yeah. her character was, maybe. My Not don't. necessarily. It's been years since I've watched yeah. that now. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I should rewatch that. It was good. It was really good. It was a really good. It was a really good adaptation of the story because also, too, coming from someone that I didn't even realize or know that it was based on a novel, uh, it just seemed like a really good like really original good source of story. work. Yeah, it was yeah. really t- well told. And the twist and how you come back from, like, you find out she's the bent neck lady. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, if so, you haven't yeah. watched it by now, like, the fuck go off problem. yourself <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> go die you've had like three years at this point i don't Literally. know if it's been there yeah, was no, a whole ass been. pandemic last year what else yeah. were you doing and then they've come out with the second season so mm-hmm. if you wanted to watch that not so great season <clears throat> not so f- much of a fan of that you one. could uh <laughs> yeah it wasn't scary it was just a love story mm-hmm. um so pretty much the same ideas there and the parts that really, like in the Netflix adaptation, uh, that they kind of follow is Nell's like descent into mental yes. instability. Um, and that's like kind of the, the whole point. Mm-hmm. Like through all the different things, you're questioning whether or not Nell is sane. Yeah. Um, whether this is actually happening or not. Yeah. If it's in her head or she's like playing it out. Like they seem to make it seem, especially in the Netflix one, um, that she was kind of making some of this up or she like blowing crazy. things out of proportion. And they mm-hmm. were just like, Oh, it's just now like one well, the same thing too, with the 99 version, especially at the beginning, how um, they open it up. Like she's a single woman in her forties who lived with her mom, caretaking her. And mm-hmm. then her mom dies. And then her sister's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. We're selling the house. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she already didn't seem too like mentally stable. Yeah. So. She's probably got like, seems like she's been sheltered and not like actually interacted with society a whole mm-hmm. bunch. And so almost reclusive. <clears throat> yeah. Doesn't really probably There's, know all the social cues. There, like honestly, if we could resurrect Robert Wise and have him do like a prequel to that, like there's some trauma, underlying trauma there that is probably a whole nother horror story yeah. of how <laughs> she ended up being the way she was. Exactly. Um, But yeah, uh, it was hard to tell, I guess, at the beginning, if you're first watching it, like, no, nah, this she's probably just crazy and she's the one doing all this. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. But then, like, towards the end, you're like, oh, no. It, it's definitely, it is haunted. And, I, and I, I could imagine, sorry, that's, like, the worst, like, situation to be in is, like, you're fucking being tormented. Yeah. And, like, nobody and no believes, believes you. you. Yeah. And when you try to prove it. That would it make looks, me go crazy. It looks even more suspicious. Exactly. Like, and that's, like. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much what kept happening mm-hmm. to Nell in the Netflix version. Like, no one kept leaving her. Like, her siblings weren't answering, you know. And then I thought it was interesting because in this, The Haunting, mm-hmm. she has, like, kind of, you know, like, she has these abilities to, like, see these things and, like, has a connection mm-hmm. with, like, the past and stuff. And so then I thought it was interesting how the Netflix adaptation, like, her and Luke with the twin thing Mm -hmm. had that connection and like Luke knew like he woke up, he was like, Oh, something's wrong. Yeah. And then, um, and then Theo had the, the touch, the touch, Mm -hmm. which I don't think is at all really anything in the novel or the Mm -mm. book, but it was still a cool thing. 
it was a bunch of flashiness yeah. that really got me yeah. roped into it. So. I loved it. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, dope, cool. Yeah, it really Sign added right to up. the story too. Yeah. Um, the whole idea of the red room. Now I don't think the red. I mean, the red room. The red door room thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The I guess the closest thing that we have in the haunting would be his study. Yeah, that door that office. they that they yeah. couldn't open for exactly. the longest time. And when I but think, it doesn't change. Mm-mm. The big thing too with the book. And the actual, like, every adaptation, the 63, 99, and The Haunting of Hill House, the house itself is a character. Yes. Like, it's and it's it a has, major integral role, a part entity. of it. Yeah. I mean, it plays, it. the house is alive. Mm-hmm. And, Very much so. And then with the novel, the it's called Hill House because it's situated between some hills. Mm-hmm. And so in the name, and in, in, like, the Netflix version... Their last name is Hill, Hill. isn't mm-hmm. it? And so then it's like, okay, that makes it being a family name makes sense, mm-hmm. kind of thing. But um, well, it really adds to the stakes when you add in not just like random strangers all going into one spot for one night. Like mm-hmm. this is a family, family thing. drama. There are ties. There's... And then the wife still, well, well, she completes suicide, but <laughs> like she still dies and stuff. So that part is yeah. like true to the kind of story. And then with the whole, she like the mom's like kind of like calls an L there and mm-hmm. like they're saying time to come home time to come home and like then like so like the last scene of the hill the haunting of hill house you don't actually know whether or not they're out of the red room yeah which is like it's like an inception thing yeah it's like it's like you yeah still spinning like is this Shutter reality Island is this, kind of yeah. too and mm-hmm. so it's like you don't really know what happened but like the whole idea they're trying to fill the house with Mm -hmm. family Mm -hmm. and so that ties the family way and that way which is interesting Mm -hmm. i liked that it's just a different way for them to like work the story in from the originals yeah i don't know it was really good i like i like i love how we're shitting on the haunting (laughs) and like oh yeah go watch the haunting of hill house um but also too because it's a it's a it's a series you're able to dive in more and divulge more into the plot and the story it's the characters because each episode is like an hour hour. long Mm -hmm. and so that you know the haunting is a barely two hour long movie Mm -hmm. so i mean it's still a relatively long it's it's actually pretty long yeah um but with a lot of Slow working parts. Oh man, that arbor, the little greenhouse. Oh room. yeah, conservatory. That's the word. Mm-hmm. I would fucking kill for that. It's pretty Ugh. cool. The like whole house in itself is like I would fucking kill to live there. The scene where they're like she's up at the top about to jump off or something because she's trying to find oh, a yeah. ghost spirit and then mm-hmm. Liam Neeson's like hanging on by all these. Oh yeah, the little is the, metal stairs, of whatever the they're spiral staircase. Spiral staircase, yeah. and they're falling. Uh-huh. I love how Luke and. And um, Theo are just there like, ah, uh-huh. oh my oh, God. What do we do? Oh my God. And they're just sad. I'm like, can someone help? Let's get a sheet and catch Please. Liam Neeson. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Bounce him off like a cartoon character. Oh my gosh. They did nothing. Uh, they were watching and honestly, joy. They're just joy. reenacting Qui-Gon Jinn's death <laughs> too. Chop him in half. <laughs> Send him over the edge. <laughs> Overall, I think, I mean, I enjoyed the experience. Mm-hmm. Again, didn't read the novel. Um Never saw the original one. So, like, as a standalone film in the 90s or early 2000s, essentially, I thought it was good. Yeah, and I think we have to keep that mind of reference is that, like, 99, two, early 2000s, if you're in this bubble, if you time machine back, like, this is a solid movie. Yeah. It's pretty good. If you watch it now, of course, yes, those cherub heads talking on the wall are going to be silly as fuck. It's silly. A little bit. There was a lot of use of CGI, and I think, too... I think they were trying They it. were trying. Well, and it was... Not necessarily, maybe the tech, maybe it's the under tech, budget or that, or maybe <laughs> could have been. Maybe they were working with the tight budget, mm-hmm. or maybe they were trying to do something that. I mean, because I didn't really, I don't really know of any <clears throat> horror movies that use CGI. Um, yeah, around aside that time. from the monsters and stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, most of the like, time it's like, like with Blair Witch and everything. It's practical just, effects and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and I think even and with yeah, I mean, I think right before that, fucking The Exorcist mm-hmm. it was all makeup and then actually getting your fucking body broken. Yeah, so, so. like that was what they did. Also, um, so you know, this movie got shit on. Apparently, there's like these things called Golden Raspberry Awards, which are like for that's bad where they movies. just shit on movies. Okay, and then also Stinkers Bad Movie Awards, and so it was nominated. It lost all of them. It lost oh, in all God. five of these to Wild 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 West. Um, <laughs> okay, I but, can see that. So, 
It was nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Director. Oh, no. <laughs> worst Actress of Catherine Zeta-Jones. <sighs> um, <laughs> worst Screenplay. Worst Screen Couple was Lily and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Um, it did win for... Okay, so it was nominated for all those for the Golden yeah. Raspberry Awards or the Razzie Razzies. That's Awards. Razzies. So that's what I thought you were yeah. talking about. Razzies. Yeah. It's, I, th- I guess the official name yeah. is Golden Raspberries, but then Razzies. Well, that's the same award that like uh, Sandra Bullock, that one year, the same year, had won the... the best. The, the, you know, what's it called? Best the, Actress. The Oscar. Yeah. For The, the Blind Oscar. Side. Okay, And yeah. then... At the same time, ha- for some other B movie, the one all about Steve or something like that, some comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. She, next year, she won the Razzie for it. So. I like all about Steve. Yeah, I, I thought, that I thought was it was funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't she when she fell in the hole? Yeah, she was fucking crazy. <laughs> I loved it. Um, Me. But so for then it was also it won a few for Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. So it um, worst picture dishonorable mentions. It says The Haunting. It won. Mm-hmm. Um, it's worst sense of direction. <laughs> It was nominated. Worst screenplay for a film grossing over a hundred million worldwide. Oh my god, that is so much <laughs> money nominated. for trash. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then it did win the worst remake category. Okay. And then uh, it was nominated for the least special special effects, and the remake sequel or prequel nobody was clamoring for. <laughs> oh my god. So this movie got shit on. Like, that director, as a whole, John people DeBont. fucking hated it. It like got pretty much a C plus um, and like an A to F. Imagine going from the gold mine that is Twister to putting out that, to that. and getting all those reviews. Like, God damn. No, but I I mean again, I I thought it was great. It did its job of scaring me as a kid. Mm. It left a lasting mark. I still will not fuck with a canopy bed. I've- Honestly, see it. the trauma. It, it's got if it's got posts coming up on the side too. I'm like, there don't even got to be a little sheet thing on Mm-mm. it. I'm still like, mm. don't fuck with it. Yeah, I'm like, what if a ghost turns into a sheet and then gets me? It could happen, obviously. Exactly. So C- I'm CGI has come a long way. Yeah, now mm-hmm. it could be real, real. I would be actually interested in seeing another remake. <laughs> <laughs> the exact same movie, just remade. Do it. Same characters. Same actors. Yes. Same everything. Same actors. <laughs> Actually, kind of, yeah. Like, right? I wouldn't, wanna, Could you I wouldn't mind that at like, all. Just, but just better. Yeah. Because right. now they've got a N- few more. No, Owen Wilson. <laughs> it's no. Luke Wilson it's playing Luke. Luke Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, overall, for me, because of the nostalgia, like, even when yeah. I watch it now, I still, I still like it. I kind of found myself... Wanting to like it because you liked it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I influenced you. Maybe it's okay if you don't like it. But you can no, get this thing I, honestly, one boob. I honestly <laughs> didn't. I'm, I'm like, I wasn't that. It's not the, as uh, shitty as they're leading. Well, it see, to I be. think what. So for me, it got really bogged down and muddled with all those effects. Yes. If you would have just left it like the story, the story it was. And, you know, maybe some more practical kind of things. Like I think it would have been okay. And then yeah. like panning in on the cherubs which they do at first they do um, and then they start actually moving the and, and then like, like the uh, ending scene where she like gets on the wall and then all these mm-hmm. things are on her and then like you know i just felt like it was almost like a horror movie and because it was the late 90s and all those like action movies were out mission impossible i think like uh, tournament yeah, yeah. all those whatever i feel like they were trying to make a big budget like you know, spectacle of a horror movie. Yeah. But sometimes which, less is more, yes. especially in horror. In my opinion. Yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> I mm-hmm. typically am not a fan of people going over. I don't like to see the ghost's face, mm-hmm. um, which like, I mean, with his face, he's like face coming in through like the canopy and stuff like that. It was. Yeah. It, it wasn't like a it, face. face. Yeah, yeah. It like was still implied. It's like, you know, when the curtains and the curtains mm-hmm. move and stuff like that. Um, But yeah, I mean, I can definitely see why it's not the best horror film, mm-hmm. but I still like it. I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's worth a watch. I think it's worth else. a watch. I think it's worth a watch when you like have just a chill day. Mm-hmm. You can watch a few horror movies, put it in there, slip it in. Slip it right in. Just, just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> um, and, you know, you can feel your own way with it. If, like halfway through it, you're like, this Dude, is get bunk. get fucking high as shit and watch that movie. I bet it's fun. Honestly. Is that what you did? Um, you know, I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, if you didn't, I'd be upset. Just a little bit. Just um, one little hit. But um, one little hit. I, I think I give it three and a half. You'd give it three and a half? Or maybe four. That's hey, you for go nostalgia. For it. That was me with the four <laughs> for nostalgia. 
Um, I, I will give it. Week, I so. give it. A, yeah, <laughs> I honestly will give it a solid. Okay, so in ninety nine, I will give it a solid like three. Mm. <laughs> Nowadays, I give it like a two point five. Uh, See, so yeah, I didn't even drop that far. A yeah, two point five. Like, I still like it. I'm, I still liked it. <laughs> I still enjoyed it. You know the. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was because of, like, the story. I kind of went into it already knowing about, like, the, watching The Hill House mm -hmm. and already us having conversation about the other older movie a it little was, bit. I will say, once I, like, realized that and when I watched it with that mindset. With that knowledge. It was much more interesting. And yeah. I was like, ooh. And then I was able because to I make found comparisons. Myself, exactly. And I found myself, like, in my head, oh, that's cool because they made it work like this and this and this and that. Mm -hmm. And what it, I think for me is it really gave me a sense of appreciation for the story they were telling in that one. Um, yeah. Because, like, everyone has their own vision. And, exactly. I'm, and you know, I'm, we're, we're all creatives. We're all artists. I don't want to shit on someone. Like, at some point, they, they thought, thought this was this great. Was great yeah. You know? So, you they know. They wouldn't for, have put it out otherwise. So, for what it was, like, unless they were just getting paid. Just, yeah, they were just like, I just want my goddamn paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Which is oh, fair. Mr. DeBont. <laughs> he was like, I'm ready to go back to France. Yeah. He's, like, probably, not even, he's probably not even French. Um. Uh, French yeah, Canadian. I, yeah, a, a good. Uh, you know, I will leave it at three. Three booze. Three, three solid booze. booze for me. Three and a half booze, maybe four, on a good day. It's like my height: five, three and a quarter, five, four on a good day. There you go. So that's what it is. Um, yeah, worth a watch. I'd say watch it, and then definitely watch the Haunting of Hill House if you haven't already. Well, how many booze would you give that while we're talking? Since we're on topic, uh, four and a half, almost five. Yeah, I loved it. It. I don't know what it was about watching it. Um, I think I was not in a good place uh, mentally mm -hmm. when I was watching it. But every single episode triggered like bad panic attacks for mm. me. Like I wasn't scared per se. Mm -hmm. I will say when that little bowling hat man came in floating, I was like, yeah. mm, 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 mm. No. hard fucking pass. No, <laughs> I don't would shit my pants if I saw that in real life. I couldn't stand seeing her silhouette of like this. Oh yeah. Like, I did I will say I saw the bent neck lady thing coming from like a mile away. Mm. I was like, oh that's now. That's her. That's her. Um but um overall I thought it was great. And yeah, it like triggered panic attacks for me. I don't know. So like I could barely I had to watch it one episode at a time mm -hmm. because I kept having such like intense reactions to the show. Yeah. Not not even being scared. It was just like something it was hurting Triggering. me. Like, I mean, I was like feeling like pain. Like mm, I was yeah, so that's a like, thing. empathetic towards the characters. And I was like, like, it was just like, yeah. I, it's not even like I related to them. I mean, I, I guess I pretty hardcore related to now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at that time I was going through some yeah. pretty, but like, I don't know. Well, not like drug addictions or anything, but like. Well, there's science behind it. There's a lot of mind to body. Like yeah. muscle, like if you feel shitty up here your body is gonna do the same thing exactly mm -hmm. and so that's that's pretty much what it did and i i mean honestly that kind of heightened my experience for it mm. it made me really appreciate it because i've gone back and rewatched it since and i've not mm -hmm. reacted Had that, that same, way yeah um maybe it's because i knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. i don't know but you already I still experienced the enjoyed it yeah and then, i will say though the last episode nothing i felt nothing no yeah, like everyone was like, I was crying, blah, blah, blah. And oh, okay. I was just like gotcha. stone face watching it like, okay. <laughs> Still a good story, but yeah. 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 No, but yeah, I, I loved it. I don't it. think I cried, and I cried during most things. I don't think I cried. Yeah, I cried, but only because of panic attacks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not because mm -hmm. I was sad. Well, I guess I was sad, well, but I didn't cry at the last episode when everyone's like fucking dying. I think th there would have been a problem if you were that sad and you weren't crying. Yeah. So... You're just letting it out. Maybe at that point. It's therapeutic. Horror yeah. therapy. No honestly. tears left to cry. I was Ari. Ariana Grande. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Sure. Um, but she's still crying somewhere in the bathroom right now. Probably. <laughs> um, what do you think of it? You liked it? I liked it a lot. I liked the progression of it. I liked, I was one of the people, I guess, who didn't see that little, um, that didn't see her being the bent lady coming from all the way. Mm -hmm. Just because that also then ties in like, Maybe I overthink it, but I'm just like, are we working time like travel into this or like because I'm like, how is that her coming to her, in ghost form coming to her when she hasn't died yet? Yeah. You know what I mean? So but it's one of those, I guess, like I think there was some yeah. sort of time slips yeah. happening slash I guess in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Things are 
there's like it doesn't have to mm-hmm. abide by the laws of mm, the earth maybe well there's a lot of well because there's like a few different multiple um kind of uh, versions of uh, theories of time travel and how you look at it like where like one is like there's the back to the future where like if mm-hmm. you go to the past and change something it will change your current future yeah or you could go to the past and change something and it will just create like a branching future where Mm -hmm. the same future is still happening but you have another future happening and then there's the one where you go back and your your past is your future and your future is your past so whatever you do everything's going to stay the same it's going to happen because it's it's all a circle yeah Yeah. so i felt like that's what they were falling into because then i feel like it probably gave her the idea of mm -hmm. how yeah complete suicide well, and that's, well, I didn't cry, but it was really sad when you finally see the episode, and I think it's the bent neck, like, mm-hmm. uh, neck lady episode right in the middle where you see her go to the house, and she's yeah, dancing, dancing. with the ghost, yeah. and she thinks she's putting on the necklace that her mom gave her, and, she, and it's yeah. really a noose. Mm-hmm. And it's like, at that point, it wasn't, I felt like it wasn't really, it wasn't her decision. Like, no. she, yeah, was coerced into, you know, whatever. Yeah, and then it makes you really think about the role of the mother. Yeah. And, like... At what point? Because she was obviously something got to her mm-hmm. in that and it was house. The house, and she had mental instability. Like she'd talk about her color storms and yeah. stuff in her head. Like she obviously had some. And I think that's a lot of the case issues. with um, a lot of horror movies and stuff like that, or the tropes of like um, being possessed or mm-hmm. dealing with spiritual anything like that. All the time, is, it's, it's thrown off his mental. Yeah, issues. and it's usually people too who are susceptible to it, or the people who have already like a low like their mental capacity is like that's they're dealing whenever, with all their shit. Like, like, and with most hauntings, if you have a bad home life, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of turmoil within mm-hmm. the family. That's when a lot of the times. Um, like demonic possessions or entities and stuff comes through Mm -hmm. and it gets really, really bad. It has to do with your mental state. If you're not, like if you're on top of the world, yeah, that shit's probably not going to bother you. Probably because you're not going to fucking pay attention. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like if you're already like, I fucking want to die. Falling through the cracks. This is bad. You're losing your sense of reality. Mm -hmm. Like not knowing, did I just actually see this? Did I not? Like, I mean, and then you start questioning yourself and it's just a big spiral and you're Mm -hmm. gone and you're just gone. And that's like mm, they make a film about you. Yeah. Yeah. Based on true events that happened forty years ago. Exactly. So <clears throat> I, I don't know. It. Watch it all. Go yeah, watch, watch them. All. Watch them. Watch them all. Th- watch every, a little, a little bit. Guys, watch all three. Yeah. Review I'm them. I'm gonna go watch the first one. Now. Yeah. Literally, I want you to. Honestly, I'm inspired to read the book. I would like to read. The I book. don't like reading. Honestly, I'll put it out there. I'm not a huge fan, but maybe if it's horror, you know what? I've never tried reading. Like legit horror. Oh, I Even read though Stephen King growing Stephen up, King so. has all his stuff, but I've never actually read them. I just watch movies. Yeah. Like, mm. The books are better. But That's what I hear. I remember there was this one book I got at a book fair growing up, and it was called like The House on Hawkman Hill or something. It's probably not even that, but that it kind of gives me the same same vibes. Vibes. Hawkman. <laughs> it was John DeBont trying to read it. <laughs> <laughs> He's I don't know if this is an actual book. Uh, Hackman's Hill. The house on Hackman's Hill. Yes, that is the cover. <laughs> oh, my God. I read that when I was like We're going to post this grade. later for y'all to see. It got four out of five. So 92% of users like this book. Oh, oh I, should go, I should go buy this and read it again. And then also read this book. The the thought, yeah, house. The Haunting House yeah. by Shirley Jackson. Shirley Whenever Jackson. it said Shirley Jackson, for some reason, I thought... We were thinking we were we were talking about Mary Shelley or she, oh I was getting Mary Shelley vibes too about Frankenstein and I'm yeah. like wait she wrote this shit too now no. there is a pretty new and interesting worth a watch uh, on Shutter oh. of Mary I believe it's called Shelley or Mary Shelley or mm-hmm. it's like a nice you get to see kind of her descent oh okay into her horror writing is yeah, good. Yeah, that's watch cool. It. Actually, we'll talk about that sometime. Man, too. we need more female horror like writers, mm-hmm. producers. Yeah, she was so ahead of her time. Mm-hmm. Fucking good for her. Anyways, we should wrap this episode up. But uh, yeah, four <sighs> out of five, four, three and a half point f- to four boos for me. Two and a good five solid to three for you. Three for me, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, fair. That's the booze you're getting. <sighs> Go watch it yourself. Let us know what you thought of it. Uh, if you thought it was trash or you thought, okay, yeah, maybe I could watch it from a 1999 perspective. Just give it a chance. Anyways, you can. Thanks for listening to this episode. We yeah. uh, 
or in the lovely Rogue Media Network studios. We don't know what we'll watch next week, but tune we're, in to we're see. We're going to find it out for y'all. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. We're not holding ourselves accountable to anything. Not at all. Um, you can follow us on Instagram um, at Boo Bays Podcast. Mm-hmm. All one big lettered word. And now that's Bays, B-A-E-S, no B's. Yeah, not boo babes. Yeah. Boo bays. No, like boobies. Yeah. But we're who doesn't love boobies? We're spooky bays because we're hot. Thank you guys. We hope to come back and talk to you soon yeah. about horrors, about scaries, about all we'll, the things in between. Maybe we'll do a classic. I don't know. We'll see. You'll yeah. have to come back next week to find out. What we appreciate horrible horror movie we're reviewing. <laughs> That's right. Oh, also, do not forget to rate, review, and subscribe yes. to us. It's the only way that we get to keep doing this and getting into your little eardrums exactly. over there. Exactly. Tell so, yes. all your friends, families, Pyramid Scheme It Out. Um, you can find us on all your listening platforms like Apple Podcasts. Spotify. Also Google Play. Also uh, Pandora. Uh, Pandora. There we go. And wherever else you might be able to find yeah. your podcasts. Yeah. The, all your listening pleasures were there. Mm-hmm. Anyways. I hope you all have a great week. Have a good day. A frightening, fantastic one. S- Until then. Spookies. Bye. Bye, bays. <laughs>